Nigeria this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve a very good God. Amen. Amen. Come on.
the Lord wanted to do something for you. And if you step forward, it's by faith, it's not my prayer, it's the faith that you release this morning. Even if it's impossible, we serve the God of the impossible. When I, I face impossible situations that I go to God. He is the God that brings the dead back to life. And in case you're familiar with this church, you know that there is no situation too dead. <laughs> that God cannot bring back to life. We know it in this church. We have experienced it in this church. There is no situation too dead that God cannot bring back to life. We're talking about God. The resurrection and the life. Cantoros da Mahandi Nosha. Libris to Fahandis to Faramadasa. Elelus da Vandivis Tarado. Blessed to Pahasi. The God of miracles is walking among us this morning. You feel a champagne in your tummy, just hold it. Paradouche, bread, the catouche. Libri, it asks if you pass about. I speak to every wound in this house. Hear the word of the Lord. You shall conceive a seed. The Lord shall come and it will be a seed that will reach out to many people. I'm talking about a destiny. Masumbe de Kaisa, the Devan de Supra Katiso, the Lebara Hakata, out of your belly shall flow. In the name of Jesus, help K1 to come forward for me. Leaves to find the revolution. Live rock and the revolution. The cup of Shakata. He's easy. Live rock and Kasada. In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. The past, the past. Let us be like a center of a house.
this morning and afternoon, God, to do a miracle on your behalf, God. You will shine the light like you always do. And you will give them a song that just came on them. And the hand of the Lord will lift up the Williams family. And Lord, God, oh, by the strangers, we first time? 
All right, that's all right. We're all family. That's good. Amen. So at this time, let's roll our announcement video, please. of him is that all peoples, irrespective of the racial, cultural, or ethnic background, will find a place where they truly belong as children of God. The vision of hope is serving love and reaching love. You can give separate amounts for offering, mission, and upcoming conferences. If you'd like to give online, just text your amount to 843-21. Again, that number is 843-21. Amen. All right, Hope International. What is our 2019 theme? A time to recognize strength. All right, we can do that one more time. What is our 2019 theme? <laughs> All right, Eric, come on, somebody. Our time to lengthen and strengthen. So we have a few announcements for you this morning. Morning prayer continues Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Bible study continues Wednesday at 7 p.m. Our international conference is coming up in October. We encourage everybody to prepare and give towards the conference. The Saturday of the conference, the 26th, is our breakfast meeting. Tickets for this event are ready and going for $20 per person. You can purchase your ticket from Pastor Wander, Brother Albert, where's Brother Albert? Back there. And Mrs. Delphine Quay, she's back there holding a lovely baby. Anytime after the service, okay? If you would like to purchase Dr. Benson's book, you can place the money in the offering envelope and write it down that is, or label that is for the book. The price is $7, but if you purchase three or more, the price will be reduced to $5 each. Auntie Pat would like to meet with all the women immediately after service for a brief meeting. And also, um, we have an announcement about, I hope I pronounced this right, Kalaloo's Catering. I think that's right. And they will be at Mother Road Market. It's a taste of the Caribbean. And that address is 1124 South Lewis Avenue, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And they will be there September 14th and 15th from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So if you want a taste of the Caribbean, go visit Callaloo's September 14th and 15th. That's today. Whoa, today is the day of reckoning. So today and tomorrow, okay? Yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Okay, well, it's okay. And today is the last day. All right. All right. So at this time, let's do our confession. So if you would rise with me, please, and we will recite that together. All right. So here we go. I am not ashamed of Christ, my Savior, or the gospel. In gratitude and obedience to Him, I gladly pledge to share His love with and befriend unsaved friends, family, and community at every opportunity. Amen. All right, you guys can be seated. At this time, let's welcome Mr. Clifton Gale. T gives an announcement. Good morning, everyone. Aren't you glad you're here this morning? The power of God is him is in this house. I'm blessed. I'm, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm blessed. Um, I'm here to make an announcement, and I probably shouldn't announce it the way I have it in my head. Because in my head, um, it sounds like this, that, you know, I've been entrusted to lead the most endangered species, and we need people of military standard. But I will not say that, I will just say, I'm um, asked to be the children church, or the children's um, and youth leader. And with that comes some responsibility. 
that high loan cannot shoulder. So I am making a plea because we need children church worker. Are you, is anybody here interested in serving in that capacity? Don't worry about it, we, will just, we won't just toss you to the children. <laughs> we will have a training and we'll have some other information, but I just want to put it out there that we are in need of um, children church Sunday school teachers and um, children church workers. And um, this is not a simple task. Because believe it or not, we're talking about the foundation of our church. We're talking about your future leaders, our future leaders. So I want you to think seriously about this this morning. We have a very, very vibrant set of young people in this church. And these are young people who are not afraid to express their faith, their feelings, and their thoughts. Believe me when I tell you, there are many Sundays I come with Sunday school lesson plan and I have to fold it up and sit and listen. Because if we can't allow that type of expression, they won't have another place to do it. And with the, um, uh, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we need as many people as possible. So if you're interested, after service, I need you to see me. I'll collect your name. Your date of birth, not your date of birth, your name, your, um, <laughs> I'm so used to work, I won't say social security number, but your name, your email address, and your phone number. That's so true. That's so true. And I want you to know also that you'll be, um, just because the church must adhere to the standard, to other standards, and we are people that must serve with dignity and integrity, that anyone who's serving with our children, We'll undergo a background check um, because we need to make sure, you know, that while we're protecting the well-being of our children, those who we're interested in their care are also okay to do that, right? Amen. Um, so there will be a training as soon as I get a list. We are will, I will come back and announce a training uh, for this. I want you to pray about it. It's a very powerful ministry, an enjoyable ministry, an impacting ministry. And God is adding to us. In fact, this year alone, we have four um, people and young children added to our um, group, our church. And God continues to add um, more to our um, church. So I'm looking forward to seeing you after church with your information. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Gale. I am so blessed to be at an international church. When he first came up here, and when the announcement video rolled, I was like, man, I wish I could visit Jamaica and say, morning, everybody. Come on, morning, everybody. Welcome to Hope. <laughs> All right, so at this time, we will have our offering. Praise team, please come up and lead us in that portion of the service. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to um, remind us all uh, about the conference coming up uh, in about a month. It's on the 25th, the 26th, and the 27th of October. And um, the Reverend Michael Smith is going to be our speaker again. How many were here last year and enjoyed it? He's coming again, Power Pack. I spoke with him. And he is ready to go. Amen. And so please give towards the conference. Um, we are a little bit um, there with um, our budget. Just, we need just about 5,500 more, which we can make up easily. The thing is that God has blessed this church. Every time, every conference, it comes. God supplies it. Amen. So we pray for what you do. We pray for your bank accounts that it will overflow. Amen. We pray for blessings over you, and God will bless you, so we'll all give to this, that by by middle of next month, we should have taken care of the uh, the rest that we're taking of our conference. Amen? Let us give cheerfully. Amen. To this one, we're going to do a song from Ghana, and you might not know it well, but just follow us, and um, it means uh, you alone. Amen? You alone. It's in God. It means the Lord. I hope my voice will take you through this as well. I am who I am because 
because of you. If it had not been for you, tell me where would I be? I was lost and sinking deep in sin. But you reach out your hand and you rescued me. No one else can do the things you do. There's no one else but you. I am who I am because of you. If it had not been for you, tell me where would I be? I was lost and sinking deep in sin. But you reach out your hand and you rescue me. No one else can do the things you do. Your love's so amazing. 
And when he finds it, this man is very happy. He puts it on his shoulders. And to your boo, well, there he said, Mumu, Nipa Ben, Nasa, Owa, Ubantin, Mwantin, Oha, Na, Womu, Biaku, Koyra, Ori, Miao, and Biaku, Akro, no Saraso, Na, Oni, Mia, Waila, no Echi, Nko, Sise, Obe, Kuno. And goes home, he calls to his friends and neighbors and says, Be happy with me because I found my long lost sheep. Now, Okunwa, or the newborn, call home, na Nenije. In the same way, I tell you, there is so much joy in heaven when one sinner changes his heart. There is more joy for that one sinner than there is for 99 good people who don't need a change. Now, Oba Ophia, or Frefre, Nenamfo, and the Nefi Pamfo. Suppose a woman has ten silver coins, but she loses one of them. She will light a lamp and clean the house. She will look carefully for the coin until she finds it. Excuse me, he's a little bit ahead of me, so let's catch up with him. Mr. Buse, Sarah and I, and you get better also. 
or the body of the Akwa or Saka and Adrian, no singing patrone at the Akro Akro at eight year war against Sacrano. And I said, or be a bang now, or what you tell do, there will be a boy ya, or in soccer near, not on pra or down the moon, now on she shall go see her, obey me. And when she finds it, she will call her friends and neighbors and say, Be happy with me because I have found the coin that I lost. Now, Okwa, a fresh friend in Amfo, and in Nancy Pound for Buano, now can say, Mumma Muni, me and in ye, and Melku, me the Tabuna, Irano. In the same way, there is joy before the angels of God when one sinner changes his heart. Sarah, now, Miss Sabu said, and need your bow, Yanko, above one name, or the Bonia for the Akwa or Sakra, now you know. Then Jesus said, A man had two sons. Amen. Amen. Thank you. At this time, let's stand and welcome our pastor, um, Reverend Dr. Trevor Grizzle, as he brings the sermon for today. presence among us. We have some more volume on this microphone, thank you. Um, I suppose in some sense hope is very unique in the Tulsa community because I don't feel that if there's any church you can go to and find this kind of worship with the different languages and the expressions that we have here. So we thank God for hope's place in the community. Thank Pastor Wanda for leading so wonderfully well the worship, praise and worship yes give him a hand and give all praise him a hand it doesn't just happen I know they pray and they practice every Saturday and so we thank God for the fruit of their labor I want to welcome those of you who are maybe new to us our guests, I see one Anya, is it Anya? yes and the Schneider. Yes, thanks for coming. Are there others of you? Hey, it's good to see all of you. At the end of the service today, I want to do one more thing that I did last week. Last week I didn't prepare you for an offering for the flood for the Turkan victims in the Bahamas. If I were to tell you what we collected, it would very it would really embarrass you. So we're saying today, if you give tangibly, and even next week, because I will not send anything less than, I would say even $300, no, that's like $400, and we're nowhere close to that. So I want you to think, in fact, in fact the parables I'm preaching on, teaching on, preaching on, there's some social horizontal dimension to those parables that say we should reach out to those people who are in need. The lost sheep. Reaching out the lost son. Reaching out. There's a social aspect, you know. Not just spiritual. But it means that we who have, we who are able, we who are in a position to help those who don't can help themselves. We ought to do that. So, I'm saying, not making you feel guilty because hope is a giving church. I've always trusted you to give. And you've always given beyond your own means. So I'm saying again today, reach into your pocketbooks, into your wallets, take something out. Next week bring something. And next week we're having a, a special guest speaker. One of my former students, in fact, she is, is in Venezuela. And if you've been following the news in Venezuela, things aren't very nice. But she's given her life at least, I think, nearly 30 years of ministry. This woman uh, over a, a seminary, not quite the level of ORU, but uh, given her life in teaching and expanding the gospel, going through so much deprivations for the sake of the gospel. 
she's coming to Tulsa. Every time she comes, she comes to hope. Bring an offering. Support that cause. God will bless you for it. Every time you give, you put your hand out to give. God puts something back. Perhaps not the same intangible financial means, but God brings something back into your life. Amen. I've found that to be so, friends. I've lived that for all my years. <laughs> and so, I know what I'm talking about. Amen? Amen. 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 Today we're going to wrap up the series I've been speaking on for the past several weeks. I've been speaking of the parables but particularly in Luke 15, those three parables with the same theme of God's love that reaches out to the lost. And that God's love tells us that there's something about us that is so special that God will do anything to bring us back to himself. The specialness of each one of us the precious of each one of us. And God's relentless love, like the hound of heaven, he comes seeking us. And he won't stop till he finds us. We're going to continue that today. We're going to finish this today. And I hope you bear with me, because you know I'm not high octane like some of you are. But I hope the word comes like gentle rain that waters the soil of your soul and brings the verdant growth that is necessary for you to stand strong in the Lord in the days that may come, that may find you in a place where you can stand without the word. And Jesus said, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We need the word. And whether it comes with a gentle rain or fire, heal away, receive it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. They're laughing at me already. Look at that. Brother Bump, a sergeant. I want to call him General Bump. Please don't laugh at me like that. <laughs> All right. So, we've had the reading. <clears throat> Let's turn to the word again, just to have it open so I can turn to you when I need it. I'll be perhaps uh, just recapping a few things that you've heard before. We're wrapping up the series, you see, so it's all right. So we have these three parables the lost sheep, the lost. Son, so I call him the lost son. We began with the lost son first. And we've come back to the beginning, the lost sheep. We will continue that today and finish that today and get into the lost coin. All three carry the same message. Same message. But the lost son, as I was, as I was reflecting on it, you know, I love the hymns. I love the hymns. That lost son, the parable is sometimes called the compassionate father, the one who waits, uh, or the waiting father, this father whose heart was full of compassion for this lost son. You could have said, son, you've disgraced the family. Don't come back. But the, this waiting father was there waiting, longing, yearning to see the son come home because he was a son, he was a part of the family. The father's blood ran in his veins. And so it was their longing. It's sometimes called the Father's love for this lost one. I won't go over the themes there except to say I was thinking just yesterday and in Friday about this message and I'm thinking of a song that sort of captured it for me. When I was young, this song spoke to my heart many times. It even solidified my faith in Jesus. Written by Will Thompson, <coughs> softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching. 
That's the father's scene. I just imagine the father sitting on the veranda, every day looking out for the son. My son, when are you coming home? When are you coming home? Looking and yearning and longing and waiting patiently. So, see on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly. Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. From home. There is food at home. There is welcome at home. There's furniture at home. There's love at home. Come home. God is calling the sinner. Come on home. Why will you linger? Why should you tarry when Jesus is pleading? Pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and heed not his mercies? Mercy is for you and for me. Come home. Come home, you who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Time is now fleeting. The moments are passing, passing for you and for me. Shadows are gathering, deathbeds are coming, coming for you and for me. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon. Pardon for you and for me. Come home. Come home. You who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, O oh sinner. Come home. That song saved my, me my life as a young teenager into my adulthood. It still speaks to me. Come home. There is room. There's your table. Your, your seat at the table. There is music waiting for you. If you're a sinner, God calls. He says, come on home. Amen? Amen. Amen. We want to transition now into the next parable, the lost sheep, which we began. We began last week. I won't go all the way through it again, but pick up a few points. We are going to ask Brother Marte to show something on the bit on, uh, on the screen. Brother Marte, go for it, man. Just back up, we can hear it, there's no sound. rejoicing. When he cometh home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which I have lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over ninety and nine just persons which no repentance.
Did you see the arduous journey the shepherd took? You saw the rugged terrain he had to walk to find that sheep. Endangering his own life. Wolves, lions, snakes, everywhere possible. But the shepherd went out looking for this one sheep, leaving 90 and 9. And that's how God is. That's how Jesus is. Have you ever experienced the pain and the mental torment of losing something very precious? Think about it. Ever? I have. Can you remember the, the uncontainable joy you had when you found it? That precious thing. The bubbling excitement, the elation you had when you found this precious thing that was lost. Now perhaps we can identify with the shepherd, you see, who has lost a sheep, because we perhaps have not lost a sheep. But most of us in some way can identify with the crisis, the sense of crisis, the anxiety, the mental anguish of losing something very precious, something we cherish, and the joy and the relief we experience when we recover that thing. Can you remember that? Any other experience? Mm -hmm. So loss and joyful excitement at recovery is what all the three parables teach us. The lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son, Lost! Humankind lost. But the joy that Jesus had, the joy that heaven has when we come home. We said last week that sheep are among the most common animals in the Near East. They provided meat and wool for their owner. That's also true today. And God calls himself a shepherd. Christ called himself the Good Shepherd. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And there is, a, there is an abundant reason why God has called himself our shepherd. And we, his sheep, we're all weak. Sheep are weak. Sheep are dependent. Sheep are stupid, senseless. You recall in the, in the story of the prodigal son, he had hit rock bottom, and the word says, and he came to himself. He came to his senses. It means a sinner is in a senseless situation. He is senseless. He's out of his mind. Are you following me? You're not talking to me this morning. Sheep cannot take care of themselves. They must have a shepherd. But they're prone to wander. It's part of their makeup. They instinctively and innocently wander from the fold, just nibbling here, nibbling there, seeing something here, seeing another sheep over there in the other pen or somewhere. It's off and it's gone, innocently. And so that's the way sometimes people get lost, you see. As we look at the scriptures, we see God's concern for the sheep that is lost. Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 16, that Christ had had this in mind when he thought about the sheep, he thought that's the parable of the sheep and the shepherd, the lost sheep. Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 16, here's what Ezekiel said, God said he should say this, for this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them. So will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on the day of clouds and darkness.
I'll bring them out from the nations and gather them from the, all the countries. And I will bring them into their land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the, the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture. And the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land. And there they will feed in a rich pasture of the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. But the sleek and the strong I'll destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Notice there, I will search for the lost and bring the strays back. I'll bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. That's exactly what the Good Shepherd does. That's exactly what the Good Shepherd was doing, searching for the sheep. See? So. There are two dimensions to this parable. There is a vertical or spiritual dimension. You're going to look at that. But there's also a, a social and horizontal direction. People to people. God and people. Vertical. Spiritual. Vertically and spiritually, people, all of us, need to be reconciled to God. We are lost. When Adam sinned, the first thing he did was to run, to flee. The relationship between him and God was cut. And really not until the cross did Jesus from the cross reach down to earth and reach up to heaven with the other hand and bring man and God back together again. Reconciliation. God seeks the sinner to have him or her reconciled again to that relationship of father to son to daughter to children. But also, God uses you and God uses me. He'll use us in this process of reconciliation. He wants to use us to reach others. God will not go out there on himself to say he uses us, we are his hands, we are his feet, we are his eyes, we are his ears. We are the ones that God uses. That's why he says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. Go! Because we are the ones through whom he brings people to himself. That's a spiritual dimension you see. People or people's desire to live independent of God. We see so clearly in these parables, at least the parable of the son, the parable of the lost sheep. Like the lost son, some people are outright hostile toward God. They want to be independent. They don't want to have anything to do with God. God, leave me alone. I want to do my own thing, go my own way. Paddle my own canoe. Captain my own ship. That's what they say, tell you. Yeah. Like the sheep, some gradually drift away. But at some point, people come to this place where they find, I need help. I need home. I need a shepherd. I need a father. I need God. We get to that place, and oh, how often I see that, where some person, quite sometimes even young, you know, they think, well, I will just go out on my own, make life on my own, I will have a good job, I'll get married, buy a wonderful home, cars and whatever else, live life in the fast lane, and then they crash. Life crashes, and they find out, it is not what I thought it would be. 
The prodigal comes to himself. The lost sheep is wounded. It's endangered. It needs a shepherd. The prodigal son needs a home, a father. And they find, I cannot make life on my own. I need help. I need help. But God is always there. We see something of how lost all of us are without God. In Isaiah 53 verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. We've got our own way. That, that, that lost sheep, that lost son. Someone had to go after the lost sheep. The sinner is lost and needs help and hope only God can give. We must bring them to God. The gospel, the good news, is not just for us. It should not be classified information we keep to ourselves. I found, I found life, I found the cure for cancer, but I keep it to myself. It's a to give to others. If Jesus Christ is life, if there is death coming, if there's a hell coming, and we know it, and we don't tell people that Jesus offers a better way, that Jesus offers life, the blood will be at our hands, said Ezekiel. We must sell them in a loving way, in a kind way. What is so strange is that people who we'll talk about everything else, don't talk about Christ, don't talk about religion, well, we can talk about religion as long as, long as not Christianity. And that's the answer. Why? We're going to find a way, friends. We're going to find a way. Find a way. We see in this part of the lost sheep, as we do in the parable of the lost son and also the lost coin, that we are all precious and we are of infinite value to God. I say we're all precious. That son had the father's genes, the father's image, the father's blood coursing through his vein. He was precious. He could not just be ignored. The lost sheep, which, as we've seen, it was precious to the flock and the families. Very precious. That's why the, sheep, the, the shepherd risked his, own, risked his own life to go searching for this one sheep. He said, it's precious. It is precious. It's valuable. And that's what God is saying, all of us. But notice, Jesus, or God, is the great shepherd of the sheep. And he searches. Let's read 1 Peter 2 and verse 25. Listen what Peter says. He says, Let's, a, let's take a tw let's begin at 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. For, verse 25, for you were like sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. You were like sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd of your souls. What about Hebrews 13 and verse 20? Here's what it says in Hebrews 13 and verse 20. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you. Jesus is the great shepherd of the sheep. Great shepherd, and he's looking for you. He searches untiringly and relentlessly 
for every one of us who is lost. Luke tells us the very purpose of Jesus coming into the world. It says in verse nine, Luke 19.10, the Son of Man came or has come to seek, to seek and to save the lost. That which is lost. That is the very purpose that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. God has put a priority on the outcast, the lost, the hurting, the broken, the outsider, saving the lost, the outsider, the social outcast was Jesus' first priority. He didn't stay with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He stayed with, he's always with the outcast. You see, that's where he was. That was his purpose on mission to earth. That was his primary mission. And that should be ours also. Our mission should be his mission. His mission should be our mission. As a church and as individuals, we should make God's priority our own also. Our own priority. Let God's priorities be your priorities. Life will be better for you. And God's kingdom will be served. But notice also here. God's amazing love. And the relentless and persistent search for the lost. Did you see that shepherd? The places he went? Did you see it? The search? That was dangerous terrain. Of those hills, the crags and the rocks, the dangerous places, they were searching for one lost sheep because we're saying this sheep is precious. It's, he's, it's worth my time. It's worth my effort. It's worth my search because the sheep was precious. You're precious to God. I'm precious to God. Lost sinners, no matter who they are, they're precious to God. Amen? Amen. But notice, the rejoicing in heaven that a sinner's return. When the sheep was found, the shepherd went back and there was a communal celebration and the word says that's the way it is in heaven when one sinner comes to Jesus heaven trumps up the orchestra the choirs of heaven and the angels begin to sing there is praise and adoration and worship going on when one sinner comes home it means that sinner is important to God one single sinner as Augustine that great black theologian of ancient times said God would love us if we were the only one there was to love because we're so precious to him. We are that important. He would love us if and Christ would have died if we were the only person he would die for. So that was a vertical aspect of the parable. But there is and the spiritual. Now there's a, a, a horizontal and social. You move in this direction. See, not just up, but this way, horizontal. A social dimension. There are many outcasts. Lost people. Outsiders. In our community. In our community. Let's not just pass them by. Let's not be like the priest and the Levite going to church but passing a wounded man half dead by the roadside. How can we say we love God when our brother, our sister is in great need, dying 
and we can help, but we fail to do that. How can we say we love? We're saying be aware of, be alert to the needs of the people around you. You perhaps cannot meet their every need, but there's something you can do to help some. Not everyone, but someone. Look at what you have. Look at what they need. Connect what you have with their need. Watch God work. Watch God work in your life. Joy will come to you. Joy will come to them as well. Life will come to them as well. Amen? Amen. There are those without food. They are without education. They are, they are without running water in some, some places. They are trapped in a cycle of poverty. They are trapped in a cycle of hopelessness. They are saying there is no way out. But you know there is a way out. You have the answer. And like in Acts 3, this man lying on that mat for 38 years, I think it was 38 years, nobody would touch him. In a great plight, no arms, no legs, no friends, waiting for an arm to be given. Peter said, I don't have silver, I don't have gold, and you perhaps won't have all that, see. But that's not all that people need. It is not just gold and silver that will make a big difference in our society. Friends, the government dumps billions every year in our communities with hardly any difference. But a touch, what I have I give in the name of Jesus rise up and walk. And the wonderful thing is that that man began to leap and to jump and to praise God. He didn't have legs. But you give those people legs. And the music that they have in their soul will burst out. You release the music and watch them dance. Watch them dance. You see? And so this is both local and global. As a church, we try to be global in what, way we, in what ways we can. Reach also. You are rich compared to some other people in other parts of the world. Believe me. You send $10, $30. You volunteer to go on a mission trip, mission trip. You find some way to reach out. You'll be surprised what help you can bring. Take your, your, your skill in engineering, in education, in uh, spiritual giving, whatever it might be. Watch what difference you can make. I'm saying there is also a social dimension to the parable. It's not just spiritual friends. Are you with me this morning? I don't know whether you're hearing me. Hmm. But like the good shepherd, like the shepherd we saw on the screen, we have to get out of our comfort zone. We become very comfortable where we are. Our eyes don't reach beyond our navel. We navel gaze. We don't look out there. So we only see ourselves, and often it is my family, me, us four are no more. But the shepherd went out, leaving his comfort zone. Sometimes we are too comfortable friends, and in being comfortable, ultimately we lose out what we have. Because God is saying, stretch forth your hand and watch me put back in your hand more than you gave. You never give to God anything and lose. Whatever you give to God, He augments it and gives it back to you. 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It comes in all different forms in our midst, friends. That's the way it does. Amen? Amen. So God is calling us to a global vision. The unreached. Even the refugees. There's even at our borders. They're looked upon as socially despicable. Socially disposable. Dispensable. They're trapped. But do we have the answer? If you're lost, recognize you're lost. But there's something wrong with your life. Life isn't clicking the way you thought it would. You feel that you need help. Repent. Regret. Return to God. And watch God change your life. Brother Marty, Put the part of the lost coin for us up now. <laughs> I'm foregoing another song I had in 1909, but because of the time, I'm trying to cut back on the time. Okay? Yes, Brother Martin, go for it, man. going yep yes thank you we didn't have any voice behind that but the Lord begin begin from the beginning again let me just walk with them through the beginning again start from the beginning on that last slide yes that link see the last coin notice before you move Notice an image on that coin. Go back, Brother Marty. What? Yes, look at that coin. Do you see the head of a, someone there? Every coin has an image. Is it an image of a king, a queen, an emperor? That is saying this coin is precious. It's valuable. It's important. Having the image of someone of this stature gives that coin great value. Is that right? Brother Martin, keep going now. Ah, but see, the woman has ten of those on what some would say was her dowry or headdress. Some would say it was part of the life savings. She loses one. You would think, well, what is still have nine? Why the bother? Ah, but see, there was value here. There was more, it was more than a coin. Here, we'll look at that. Yes? So notice the anguish. The, the, the sense of panic. Crisis sets in because something precious is taken away. It's lost. Okay? And so she begins to sweep that dark room where these Palestinian homes, these uh, homes in Israel, they normally have no, no windows, just a door. So it's always dark in there, you know. So she lights. Keep, Brother Marty, keep, keep, keep going. Keep going. She's searching. Notice her. She's looking. She's looking for that coin. Keep going now. Keep going. And so she didn't, she searches for the coin. She didn't find. She doesn't find it. So she begins to sweep with that broom. Yes. Keep going. And she finds it. Yay. Excitement, joy. She finds it. She lights up. You notice that? Okay. Keep going, Brother Marte. Ah, but she can't keep it to herself. She can't keep her excitement to herself. So she calls someone from the community. In fact, she calls the whole community to join her. Brother Martin, that last one. There's one to come, right? One last one? Well, if it's not, we'll, we'll stay right there. I thought there was another one to come. There it is. Thank you. There it is. She calls the others in the community. Come celebrate with me. Ah, this precious thing, the thing I cherished. I found it. 
Come share the joy. Rejoice with me. The joy of discovery. Thank you, Brother Martin. Again, this Bible teaches us that the value that God places on us. No, it is. So, the woman we've seen is wearing a headdress with ten coins on the headdress. One coin became dislodged, got lost. But the headdress was something very precious and valuable to her. It was more than a coin that was lost. This headdress, this coin that was lost, cradled precious memories. Because it must have represented either a dowry that was given in which there were precious memories, love attached, but her future also, it could have been part of her savings for her lifetime. We don't know for certain. But the coin was precious. Are you with me this morning? So it was more than a coin that was lost. William Barton, one of the great scholars of, of uh, days gone by, said, um, he still speaks today, what a wedding ring is to a Western woman. So this headdress was to this woman. And so losing a coin from that headdress was a great loss for her. To lose it was a, a cause for great concern. And so notice the woman's attitude isn't lax, it's not casual, it's not, look, well, I got nine left, don't worry about it. That's not, that wasn't her attitude, was it? It was not enough that she has nine coins remaining. The loss of one coin tugs at her heart, disturbs her peace because of what it means to her. Its value, its worth, the sentiment it represents. And she's panting for breath, no doubt. There's a sense of urgency. The coin must be found. So she pulls out all stops. First she kneels down. And she's searching everywhere. Everywhere. She can't find it. Kenneth Bailey, one of the great scholars of uh, Palestine, and he wrote a book called Poet and Peasants. Peasant. He said this, the peasant village is to a large extent self-supporting, making its own clothes, cloth, and growing its own food. Cash is a rare commodity. Cash is a rare com commodity. Hence the lost coin is of far greater value in a peasant home than the day's labor it represents monetarily. Some scholars surmise that the ten coins were her life savings up to this point. Others say it was a dowry worn as an ornament. But what I believe, as you can see, the loss of one coin puts her in a crisis mode, a crisis mode. She must find the coin at all costs. So she lights a lamp to dispel the darkness of a windowless house. Unable to find it, she kneels down and she looks for it, then she didn't find it or doesn't find it, then she finds a broom to sweep the, the dirt floor. She probably swept once and twice and pressed more. Just as she is about to give up, no doubt, luck smiles on her. She sees a small glint, a glimmer that responds to the light of the lamp. There it is! The coin I lost! I found it! Eureka! I got it! Joy! Excitement! She's elated, bubbling and bursting with joy. And I can, can see her darting out of the house, running out of the house, to go find her friends in the village. Come celebrate with me. I, I have found that coin I lost. This precious thing, I found it. Come join in the celebration. 
Can I say something here as I close? As I said earlier, a coin has an image stamped on it, which makes it precious. God has his image stamped on every one of us. We were made in his image. And no matter how lost a person might be, no matter where they are on the social scale, on the social ladder, no matter where they find themselves in the pig pen, no doubt, and they carry the image of God, God is saying, my image is on this one, on that one. I can't just abandon that one. I'll go and search. But notice something else. It means this coin is valuable. It's valuable, precious. But notice this. No matter how valuable the coin is, or a coin is, a coin is useful only as it is in circulation. You can hoard your money. It's doing no good. It's not helping you. It's not helping anybody. A lost coin is not serving its purpose. That's not what it was made for, to be thrown down and lo be lost. No, not, not so at all. There is, the coin is useful only as it is in circulation. People serve God's purpose and their own purpose of being made only as they find their place in God's service, in God's kingdom, doing God's work, doing God's will. That's all, the only way they are useful at all. Only that way they're useful. Are you with me this morning? Yeah. But we're all made for a purpose, every one of us. God didn't just say, I need to add one more to the population of the world. And so you're born. I was born. It's more than that. God is saying, I got a place, a purpose, a plan for this life to impact, to impact the world in some way. Be small, be great, but you're born for a purpose. You're born for a purpose. Have you found that purpose? If you are hidden, if you're lost, you're not serving that purpose only as you're in circulation in that co as a coin, being exchanged for precious goods. Are you serving your purpose? Are you here this morning? Yes. So only as one serves one's purpose, for which God created him or her, then that will be fulfilled and bring joy to God and to that person's life. By the circulation, you're not happy, alone. Can you say useless? Joyless? Nobody rejoices. You should impact no person. There's no joy. And God doesn't is not, not glorified in that life either. But God is saying, Oh, I'm searching for you to put you back in life, in circulation, that you can be a blessing, you can impact people, you can bring joy to people, you can bring joy to heaven, you can glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. 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 God bless you. I'm done with this, this series. Is the clapping saying, thank God he's over and done with it? <laughs> well, are you up to a song this morning? You got a song, you want to come close now? You got a hand, hand clap, would you? Yeah. Hallelujah. I was just giving God thanks for a church where we can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what it's all about. 
we so often want to hear, you know, how you're going to be prosperous. The Lord is going to do this. And we get excited about that. But when it comes down to it, this is what led us to Jesus in the first place. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And we give God thanks for church and for a wonderful pastor. Give him a clap again. That brings the raw word of God. Oh, how he loves you and me. Sing with me. It's time to give me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how. Overwhelming to us, and you love us so much. 
And with loving kindness you drew us. You didn't leave us in sin and in shame. You saved us. You found us in our mess. And you cleaned us up. And we have a hope. And we have a future. Hallelujah. So Lord, as we leave from this place, we leave them with hearts of gratitude. Because of, we remember what you did for us. But Lord, we also want to remember those who are lost. You sent us to go reach for them, to help them up out of darkness. Help us to ever be mindful of them, to give, to rescue, to preach your word to the uttermost parts of this, this earth. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he give you peace. In Jesus' name.
And it says, given all the things we can't give anymore, it said, I'm going to find another way to give. That's love. It always finds another way. So always find that way to show your love. Keep on giving. Never stop giving. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, so again, uh, I'm saying next week, if you haven't given, next week bring, what, bring an offering. The Bahamas is close to us. People are in need. We can help. Amen. God bless you. Uh, all right, don't forget that the women will be meeting Auntie Pat after service. Please. Amen. Five minutes. Please meet Auntie Pat at the front, please.
Hold on. Thank you. 